Yes, Ruku, what is it? Order members. Ruku, what is it? Honorable, Honorable Speaker. In relation to the motion? Yes. What is it? Honorable Speaker, I rise to seek your clarification on the special motion for the removal of the Deputy President. Honorable Speaker, as you are aware, four seats in the House are vacant following the resignation of the Honorable Obio Wadai and Honorable John Bardi upon being appointed as Cabinet Secretaries. Further, as you are aware, the seat of Magarini constituency was declared vacant following a successful election petition. The Banisa constituency seat was also declared vacant following the unfortunate demise of our colleague. In this regard, we are now 345 members in this House and not 349 members. Honorable Speaker, in this right, what the threshold shall, we, shall, we, shall you use to determine whether the special motion? <laughs> what is the threshold, Mr. Speaker? Shall you use to determine whether the special motion meets the constitutional threshold? Different report, Mr. Speaker, to pass this motion, shall we require two thirds of 345 members or 349 members? In my view, faculty seats should not be counted. Order. You can't ask a question and answer it. <laughs> You cannot ask the question and answer it. Honorable Speaker, let me prosecute. I'm trying to prosecute my point of order. In my view, faculty seat should not be counted in determining the voting threshold. Further, I wish, I wish to seek your clarification on whether our proceedings are varied in the right of the four Fakan sits. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. You've made your point. Bashir. Honorable Speaker, Article 145 and 150 of the Constitution provides for removal of the Deputy President. Our standing order goes to great length on the same to explain the procedure for removal of the Deputy President, as stipulated under Standing Orders 64 and 65. Honorable Speaker, what is clear from reading of Articles 145 and 150 of the Constitution is that the role of this House is just to pass the resolution as to whether the Deputy President shall be impeached or not. It is the exclusive role of the Senate to conduct the trial process. Simply put, we are the initiators and the Senate will be the trial house. Honorable Speaker, consequently, I seek your guidance on whether it is necessary to invite the Deputy President to this house in terms of the right to be heard, noting we have nothing to do with the real process. In my view, the Deputy President shall be required to appear before the Senate, but nevertheless, I seek your indulgence on this matter. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members, we leave it there. Yes, Junet. Mr. Speaker, I don't uh, intend to anticipate debate. I will not allow you to. Yeah, because this is just a notice of motion. But Mr. Speaker, there are matters that surround the notice of the motion that needs your guidance and action, Mr. Speaker, because, Mr. Speaker, this is a very momentous issue. Because, as you are aware, when this country gave itself the, the, the new constitution, Mr. Speaker, Kenyans were very happy. And this is one of the moments in this House, Mr. Speaker, when we are going to exercise 
Article 150, which has not happened before. So, Mr. Speaker, this is a very, very important matter for this nation, Mr. Speaker, that is being exercised through this House. But having said, Mr. Speaker, as you are aware, there are members from our side and members from the other side who have signed to this petition, to this motion, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to get your assurance as the boss of this house, as the leader of this house, as the speaker of this house, Mr. Speaker, that the 291 members of parliament who have signed to this motion, Mr. Speaker, their safety and security will be guaranteed, Mr. Speaker. Because the motion does not end at the tabling, at the duties of motion today. It will, go, it will go through a process. It will be formally again moved. Members will debate and members will vote on it. Mr. Speaker, we want those 291 members of parliament to turn up here the day of voting, Mr. Speaker, without missing any one of them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have just passed the, the new Inspector General of Police the other day here, Mr. Kanja. From Madrid, From, uh, not really. He must take responsibility <laughs> as the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Speaker, to guarantee the safety as the Inspector General of the country, Mr. Speaker, to guarantee the safety and the security of the 291 members of the Mr. Speaker, you know this thing. What we are doing is not a small thing, Mr. Speaker. When Trump was being removed, was being impeached in the United States, Mr. Speaker, you know what he attempted to do. And what can happen here, you know, Mr. Speaker. And let, and let us not fight, let us not begrudge anyone, because what the House is doing is constitutional because the House is just exercising its mandate. It's not doing anything outside the Constitution. There is nothing on Constitution that's happening in this House, Mr. Speaker. You can impeach a Cabinet Secretary, you can impeach a Deputy President, you can impeach the President if you wish so. So, Mr. Speaker, this is an exercise that is given to us by the Constitution. So, Mr. Speaker, You've made your point. I have made my point, but I conclude by saying this, Mr. Speaker. That, Mr. Speaker, let we, when we were elected, Mr. Speaker, as members of Parliament, we became the staff of the Parliamentary Service Commission. Each member here, Mr. Speaker, they are employer, they are employees of the Parliamentary Service Commission, which you are the chairman, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I have spoken on behalf of the members because when they were signing, that is what they told me, Mr. Speaker, as the minority leader. They told me, you, we are in support of this thing. We are really ready to move, but we want things done legally and procedurally and within the Constitution, inside Parliament and outside Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I don't want to open debate. Eh? Yes, uh, Whip, what's your point of order? Honorable Speaker, um, I also seek your guidance and indulgence on... Uh, the notice of motion that has just been tabled here today, because we all agree that post-2010 Constitution, this is unprecedented. In as much as it happened years back, this is very new, you know, post-2010 Constitution, and we will need a bit of some guidance. Ordinarily, Honorable Speaker, any motion that is brought before this House and that is of public interest goes through the entire process, including public participation, Honorable Speaker. I'll, I need to seek your guidance and indulgence on the place for public participation as far as this notice of motion is concerned. Because looking at the jurisprudence that has been made by the courts and um, the, the lower legislative arm, which is the county assemblies, on the impeachment of the governors and deputy governors, Honorable Speaker, you'll realize and notice that Many uh, impeached governors and, or their deputies challenge their impeachment based on the process of public participation, Honorable Speaker. This is unprecedented, and of course it's my view that to replicate the same, you know, to what happens on the impeachment of governors and deputy governors, and they invoke the element of public part participation across the country. You've made your point. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Before you, Majority Leader, uh, Farah, 
has been raising his hand. I'll give you one minute, Farah. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I also join the other colleagues in this, but I have just one very important, most important in this country to raise. Not only do we have to protect the lives of 291 members of parliament who have appended the signature there, we must also protect the system. The IG must protect our president to the hilt. Because you know the kind of a constitution we have. Any reckless thug can decide to change the course of history if, God forbid, anything were to happen to our president. You get my point? And there are people who we have been so worried lately, I get the feeling that they can even have the capacity to plan something like that. Let us make sure this information goes out. We, our president must be protected to the hilt until this motion is over. Because if, God forbid, anything were to happen, then we have something much bigger to worry about. Thank you. Ichumba. And those guys are... You're the last one there. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My Honorable Speaker, if you will indulge me, I'll add something on security. But before that is on Standing Order 85, Honorable Speaker, 85-2, which Honorable Speaker would beg, even as you guide members, that members listen, that it shall be out of order to anticipate the debate of a motion of which notice has been given by discussion upon a substantive motion or amendment and all that that is said in the standing orders, Honorable Speaker. And I say this, Honorable Speaker, because I know we are in an open and transparent society and many of us will be invited to media stations to discuss this impeachment motion which notice has been given today. Just to caution members that it will be completely out of order to discuss the substance of the motion in media stations before debate as uh, is contained in our standing orders. So when we are invited to media stations, maybe we be guarded in what we discuss yes. so that we do not go into the substance of the motion until we are done with debate. After debate, Honorable Speaker, we are all at liberty to discuss, and that includes, Honorable Speaker, both those who have appended the signature, their signatures, like myself, and the other few who have not appended their signatures, Honorable Speaker. The 58 members who have not appended their signatures. Honorable Speaker, just to add on to what the Honorable Farah and Honorable uh, Junette have said. Honorable Speaker, the security of members of Parliament is paramount. Honorable Speaker, I say that looking at you because you know on the 25th of June this year, Honorable Speaker, none other than yourself, you are a target, and you know that. And not a target for harm, but a target for elimination based on the position you hold as Speaker and the ranking order should anything happen to the President or the Deputy President, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to beg that you take with a little more weight the issues raised by Honorable Junette and Honorable Farah Malim. Because, Honorable Speaker, we have seen it on social media. We have been told by certain quarters that before March of 2025, they say, Bendera itapepea mulingoti nusu. Honorable Speaker, these are weighty issues. And I hear what the Honorable Farah Malim is saying on the security of the President, and we have no business to advise the Inspector General and the Director of the National Intelligence Service on what to do. But for members of this House, all the 349 of them, Honorable Speaker, you must direct the Inspector General of Police, who was approved by this House less than a month ago, to ensure that when this House is sitting within the precincts of Parliament and even outside and including committees of this House sitting, Honorable Speaker, members are secured. Thank you. And even in their homes, Honorable Speaker, they are secured. Because, Honorable Speaker, I say this, being privy to the information that I was privy to and you are privy to on the 25th of June, and knowing, Honorable Speaker, that as Honorable Judetta said, 
We are not dealing with an ordinary matter. We are not dealing with an ordinary man. We are dealing with a black man with a very black heart. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Order, Honorable Members. Order. Order, Members on their feet. Order, Deputy Speaker. Take your seat. Take your seats, those who are... Uh, Honourable members, those points raised, I'll address them later in the day. I want to direct members of the House Business Committee to retreat to Room 9 so that we can have House Business Committee to address, among other things, the process of disposing of this motion in the shortest time possible so that we don't maintain anxiety unnecessarily and the issues that you have raised about public participation and others. So after the House Business Committee, the Speaker will come back to the House at about five and give you direction on what we shall do from here going forward. So I'll now direct the Deputy Speaker to come and take the seat so that members of the House Business Committee, Juneta and your team, Richungo, your team, all troop to Room 9 for a meeting immediately. I've closed that chapter, Omshomba. You didn't raise your hand when I was giving people. That chapter is closed. I'm sorry I didn't see you. Yes. Pardon? Two? Take the seat. Uh, David Speaker, take the seat. Next order, order number seven, questions and statements. Honorable members, order. The honorable member for Funula. You have a statement, honorable member for Funula. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Order, Honorable Members. Honorable members, order honorable members. Order honorable members. Order honorable members. Order honorable members. Okay, I think we can proceed. Honorable member for Funula, uh, why don't you, let's allow Dr. Pukose to make his statement, then you go next. Honorable Pukose, chairperson of the health committee. Honorable members, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wish to make a statement on the shift from NHIF to shift 
rollout of the universal health coverage. Honorable Speaker, the Ministry of Health and Social Health Authority is today rolling out the Social Health Authority Health Care Services and Benefits under the three funds. That is the Primary Health Care Fund, Social Health Insurance Fund, and the Emergency, Chronic, and Critical Illness Fund. Uh, thank you very much.